Okay, today we're going to start learning about proofs. So uh, some of the content standards we're going to discuss uh, will be applying geometric methods to solve problems. And our mathematical practices will be reasoning abstractly and quantitatively. And we'll construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. So previously, um, this was in the early part of the chapter, so we didn't go over this part. But we are going to identify and use basic postulates about points, lines, and planes. So that's what we have done previously, is that we have um, used the definitions of point, line, and plane. And now we're going to use those definitions to, uh, in proofs. And then we're going to write paragraph proofs. So we have some new vocabulary. We have a postulate and an axiom. And actually, the word axiom is just another name for a postulate. Now, a postulate, there are statements that are accepted as true without proof. Just like point, line, and plane, they're undefined terms that we use to define other terms. So we're going to use some postulates today about points, lines, and planes. Then there's proof, a theorem, a deductive argument, and a paragraph proof. And then there's the informal proof. A lot of times the paragraph proof is called an informal proof. It doesn't mean that it's any less important than formal proofs. It's just a, a different type of proof. So here are some postulates about points, lines, and planes. Uh, what's going to be very important now is that in a separate place in your notes, uh, you're going to need to list all the postulates that we come across. You're going to need a place for definitions, so we might go back and write some definitions, a point, line, plane, perpendicular line, that kind of thing. Um, properties, you're going to need a place for your properties, and you're going to need a place for theorems. So again, let me state that. You're going to need a place for postulates, properties, theorems, and definitions. So here's the beginning of our postulates. The first one. And you don't necessarily need to name it 2-1 because it depends on which book you're using as to what it'll be called. So we're not going to refer to 2-1. We're going to refer to it as the postulate about the line. Through any two points, there is exactly one line. So it's going to be very important that you write in words what this postulate is and draw a picture of it and then explain it in your example so that you when you're working through proofs you have something that's very easy for you to go back and find. <clears throat> Secondly, through any three non-collinear points there's exactly one plane. So the, we've learned that the definition of plane is that it has three non-collinear points. We can name it by those three non-collinear points. Also we can name it by plane K. So plane K is the only plane through non through non-collinear points A, B, and C. We've also learned that a line contains at least two points. So it takes a minimum of two points to name a line. So line N contains points P, Q, and R. <clears throat> Next, a plane contains at least three non-collinear points. So here we have a picture of a plane. Plane K contains non-collinear points L, B, C, and E. Finally, if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line containing those points lie in the plane. So we see that points A and B line in plane K, and line M contain points line A and B, so line M is in plane K. <clears throat> now a key concept, if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. So lines S and T intersect at point P. We need to know this as well. If two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. So planes F and planes G intersect at line W. Now, this is not all new. We've talked about some of this in the previous chapter. <clears throat> so let's look at a real-world example. So we have some picture of some uh, buildings here. And we're to explain how the picture illustrates that the statement is true. Then state the postulate that can be used to show the statement is true. So we've got some planes here, plane P, plane Q. We've got line AB, line BC, line AC, line M, which contains EF and G. Okay, so points F and G. So let's look over here at points F and G. 
lie in plane Q and on line M. Line M lies entirely in plane Q. So what postulate can be used to show that that statement is true? Points F and G lie on line M and the line lies in plane Q. So the postulate 2, 5 which states that if two points lie in a plane, the entire line containing the points lie in that plane shows that this is true. Now we're to prove that points A and C determine a line. So we've got two points, A and C. Well, they lie along an edge, don't they? So postulate 2, 1, which says through any two points, there is exactly one line and that shows this is true. Only one line contains both A and C. Now plane P, it's over here on this other building, the blue one. Plane P contains points E, B, and G. So here's your check your progress. So pause for a moment and choose your answer then we'll come back and check. Did you choose C? A plane contains at least three non-collinear points. So you remember we discussed that? Here's another one. Line AB and line BC intersect at point B. So pause for a moment and study the uh, diagram and then select your answer. Okay, if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. So we have line AB and line BC, and they do intersect at exactly one point, point B. You can use postulates to explain your reason, reasoning when analyzing statements. So here we're going to analyze statements using postulates. Now once a statement or a conjecture has been proven, it is called a theorem, and it can be used as a reason to justify statements and other proofs. So we are to determine whether the following statement is always, sometimes, or never true, and then explain. If plane T contains line EF and line EF contains point G, then plane T contains point G. And that's always, because postulate 2.5 states that if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line containing those points lies in the plane. How about this one? Line GH contains three non-collinear points. Now you need to know what this definition is, non-collinear. And this would be never. Non-collinear points do not lie on the same line by definition. So it can't contain three non-collinear points. Then it wouldn't be on the line, would it? Okay, time to check your progress. So pause for a moment, select your answer, then come back. Determine whether the statement is always, sometimes, or never true. Plane A and plane B intersect in exactly one point. That would be never. If two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. Okay, good job for those of you that caught that one. Pause and check your progress again. Point N lies in plane X and point R lies in plane Z. You could draw only one line that contains both points N and R. That would be always through any two points, there is exactly one line. Notice when I'm giving you my answer, I'm not saying postulate 2, 5 or 2, 7 or 2, 1. I'm just telling you what the postulate means. Okay, key concept. So here's the proof process. It would probably be a good idea for you to list this in your notes. Basically, you need to list your given. You're going to come up with statements and reasons and then you're going to write down what it is you have proven. It is extremely important that you draw 
a diagram to illustrate your information. It is very difficult for your brain to hold all that information in. So download it. Everything that's given, you draw that on your diagram. It'll help you see which direction you need to go. Okay, now we're going to start writing a paragraph proof. Um, one method of proving statements and conjectures is a paragraph proof. Now it involves writing a paragraph to explain why a conjecture for a given situation is true. Paragraph proofs are also called informal proofs, although the term informal is not meant to imply that this form of proof is any less valid than any other type of proof. So given line AC intersects line CD, write a paragraph proof to show that A, C, and D determine a plane. So this is what we're given, and we're trying to prove, we're given that a, lines AC intersects line CD, and we're trying to prove that ACD is a plane. So I want you to pause for a moment and draw that diagram. Now, here's our proof, and this is written as a paragraph, but let's think. We're given that two lines intersect, and they intersect, that they're all lying in the plane. So we, what we must prove is that three points, we must prove the three points that are not on the same line. That's what we're trying to come up with because it has is three non-collinear points that form a plane. So here we have two here, and there's two listed here, and we have to say that all three of these are non-collinear. Okay, AC and CD must intersect at C because if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. Okay, so we're showing that they intersect at C. Point A is on AC and point D is on line CD. So points A, C, and D are not collinear. Therefore, ACD is a plane as it contains three points not on the same line. So here's our given where they must intersect, and the, here is the postulate. Their intersection is exactly one point. Okay, so then we're listing again that point A is on AC and point D is on CD, so they are non-collinear. Let's check your progress. And they've already dr drawn the diagram for you on this one. We're told that RT is congruent to TY, and we're also given that S is the midpoint of RT, and that X is the midpoint of TY, and we're to write a paragraph proof to show that ST is congruent to TX. Okay, they're going to give you the proof with one reason missing, and so we have to choose the best reason to complete this proof. So if you need to take a moment and pause so you can draw this diagram, write down your given, and then we can go on to the paragraph proof. Okay, so the paragraph proof. We are given that S is the midpoint of RT and X is the midpoint of TY. By what? Okay, what reason can we give to say that RS is congruent to ST and TX is congruent to XY? Okay, pause for a moment, come up with your answer. Use the definition of congruent segments, RS is equal to ST. So if they're congruent, they're equal to each other. That's what we're stating. That's the definition of congruent segments. You want to make sure that you have that in your definitions. Also, TX is congruent to XY, so by definition of congruent segments, TX is equal to XY. Now we're also using the given statement, RT is congruent to TY, and the definition of congruent segments to say that RT is equal to TY. And so if RT is equal to TY, then half of RT is equal to half of TY, right? We can, whatever we do to one side, we can do to the other. And it keeps these um, expressions equal. So since S and X are midpoints, and half of RT equals ST, and half of TY equals TX, then by substitution, we can say that ST is equal to TX. And by definition of congruence, so we're working backwards now, if they were congruent, we could say they're equal. So if they're equal, now we can say they're congruent. ST is congruent to TX. 
which of these definitions can we substitute back in the proof definition of midpoint very good so it's the midpoint of a line segment shows that it divides them in two equal parts now we have proven our midpoint theorem so we can now use our midpoint theorem to go and use it in other proofs so that's what we just did we uh, had a conjecture and we proved it so now we can use it in other proofs that's how mathematics is formulated what you need to do is um, make sure in your notes I told you to go ahead and start a postulates and properties and definitions and theorems page and you probably want a page for each one uh, go back and look in your textbook you'll want to be sure to go to um, page 27 to get a segment midpoint page 46 to write down the definitions of special angle pairs page 47 for definitions of angle pair relationships and page 48 for definition of perpendicular lines those are going to be very important for you here in this chapter and in the future chapters very good you're ready to go get started